This big old bruiser has its own solenoid, has its own valve down here in the throat of the head, and it's going to operate. So if we break the head off, still the valve should shut off after its operating time is over with, and we're only going to have a flood for a few minutes. If this thing's standing up so high that a guy catches a wheel and knocks it sideways and breaks the base of the head off, now we're below the valve. Now we've got a live line that is spewing water. The question then is, can that be shut off automatically? Yes, that's what we have low pressure switches for on systems. Also, the newer systems have tremendous flexibility that way, and they actually have flow controls being mon they actually have flow switches monitoring flows around the course and they will automatically turn the system off if the flows go wacky too high. So that's the newer super premium automated systems do have that capability. Yes. Now do those switches <coughs> turn it off to that one or do they shut off the main line? The, that particular system would, could be designed to either shut off a zone of the course, so there might be isolating valves that would shut off like three fairways and T-block an area, or it might turn off the whole thing. It's just saying, hey, we got a disaster out there shut down because we know there's a flood happening out there somewhere. You know, and, and because of the golf courses, because of all of the steep hills and so on, you get a three inch or four inch sub main line broke loose and it's pumping out a thousand gallons a minute, you can create a river. I mean you're gonna, if it happens up on a ridge somewhere, by the time somebody sees it the next morning, you could have created a giant gully out there. So uh, it can have a huge impact. And so yeah, it, you know, they just want the whole thing to shut down and then they'll deal with it when somebody gets there to deal with it. Most courses could then go back and operate most of the system and they could isolate the area out that was broken and fix it while everything else kept running. <coughs> Last but not least is maintenance will have an effect on how sprinklers operate. You know, if we do not maintain them, if we don't keep them clean, if we don't keep the filtration clean on the system, oftentimes just plugging up the filter at the front end, not even in the sprinkler itself, but back at the pump, uh, that's going to drop the pressure and that's going to mess up the application rate. Anytime we have a pressure drop, we mess up the application rate. Anytime we have a orifice size change, that's going to mess up our des designated application rate. So we have to be aware of those things. And uh, so maintenance can have an impact on the total performance of the sprinkler. Also as they wear out. If we're starting to wear out the bearing bushings and so on, those need to be replaced so that they're not leaking or so that the heads don't blow off altogether. You can look at impact heads Impact heads will run to the point where they'll eat the whole bearing out and then the head blows off the top and then you just have a geyser going right up out of the, the riser that it was sitting on. And you occasionally can drive around and see that in an ag field. That'll happen. You'll drive by and there'll be a hand line running and if the sprinklers are not performing very well. You look down the line and there's a geyser where a head is blowing off the top. It didn't unthread itself the whole brass bearing wore out and it just blew the guts of the sprinkler out of itself. That's what happens. And usually a guy will catch it within the day, you know. In the meantime, he's got himself a geyser out there. And it had, you know, once you start looking for this stuff, you see it everywhere. You'll start seeing every divergent thing out there in the field. Yes. Yeah, getting, uh, the comment was getting things stuck in the line like uh, rodents. Uh, 
mice, ground squirrels, things that like to get into the pipe. If you're using, a, if you're using pipe, aluminum tubing that, especially hand line, you stack it in a stack and go out and hook it up after it's been stacked in a stack for a while, Lord only knows what's crawled inside of it. You're going to get snakes, you're going to get road, ground squirrels, mice, rats, skunks, uh, whatever will fit in that pipe, it'll come down the line. So yeah, you can get, it can be real divergent. So.